Доброго ранку усім. Good morning to everyone. We are starting our work in the UCMC. The first topic today is the presentation of Go East initiative. How Donbass, how does Donbass public sector change and why it is important? We have the guest, Mustafa Nayem, founder of Global Office and MP, and Svetlana Kaladiga, East Initiative Coordinator. Thank you, colleagues, for coming. We would like to tell about our initiative. From the very beginning, I would like to say that it's a very long road. We are just starting officially, but for more than a year, we've been working in the East in different regions. When we were developing the patrol police in eastern cities, we saw that there's a big activity of civil society in the regions, and there are many projects, many NGOs that work there. But we also saw that uh, they are not united, really, and there's the feeling that we need to invest more into capacity of these organizations. It all started from us developing a couple of years ago the center of providing administrative services in Mariupol, and that was set up uh, with our assistance. We were one of the coordinators of the project. That's one of the most successful projects in regions. Then we worked in Kramatorsk and Severodonetsk. We were trying to involved the civil society to our projects. We organized camps, English language camps. Last year we started the so-called Go Camp East. We were bringing children from different uh, towns of eastern Ukraine to Kiev to the camp where they met with the volunteers, the English language native speakers, and we uh, managed to find the volunteers who were ready to go to the eastern regions. And in sev several towns, we had local camps. 600 children this year and 300 children last year were brought to Kiev, and we organized such uh, summer camps with them. What we would like to do now, we realized that some uh, single things that will be happening in the East, they don't have a long-lasting effect. And we started from developing a large project which will help the civil society, local organizations to be more independent and more capable. We understand that we cannot just bring some activists, bring some something from Kiev and do something from outside. Our, uh, task is to make the civil society stronger locally so that they can independently raise money, develop projects, and be capable of creating long-lasting stories. We are sure that the money that is spent in the regions now in many cases are not spent efficiently because that doesn't have any long-term uh, effect. Many projects developed by small groups of people, they are implemented, no one assesses how effective they are. After that, the groups disappear, and we uh, have no results. This year, we started the initiative, which we call Go East. The main objective of this initiative is to develop the development and support of uh, the civil society organizations, how we'll be doing it. We have developed a big map of the, such projects. Uh, we have one of the directions headed by Svetlana Kaladi. We thank her for joining this project together with girls and uh, young men who work with her. Now we have done a lot of research work on what are the projects, local projects, who works there, how, what is their capacity and what they need. Our further task is to help these organizations to get united, to find joint and co common interests, common needs, and help them become stronger. In our plans, it is to create regional forum and uh, also Kiev forum. Uh, what is important, and that is what differs us from other initiatives, First, we do not want just to talk, to spend one more grant, one more thousand dollars, to go somewhere, tell things, and leave. Now we are creating the community, organizations, which will be helping each other, 
and will be communicating the activities of these organizations because in many of them there's a problem that they do a lot. There are many good projects, local projects, but no one knows that. And the lack of communication in Kiev and not understanding of what's happening in the regions leads to the local projects be uh, being unsatisfied. Second thing, the needs which are to be satisfied. Uh, but we need to, not just to tell, let's help you. Uh, we want to teach to do it. This is not only one training, but we want to work continuously to work with the different organizations and together implement projects. Now we have a project that we want to create and we deal with the preparation of this project. This is sharing exchange of students uh, between East and West, and Svetlana will tell us more about it. I won't go into detail now. And uh, we believe that students' exchanges between eastern part and the rest of the Ukraine is uh, one of the main factors that can change stereotypes of people locally concerning each other. If you ask people in Mariupol what they think about Ushgorod or what they think in Kramatorsk about Lviv, you will be surprised. And if you ask in Lviv what is going on in Shurokin and Kramatorsk, many people believe that um, they have war there, and, uh, but we know that uh, foreign citizens uh, come there and uh, um, they see the situation at the local level. So we work with NGOs locally and we are in great dialogue and we will present this project now. This is only beginning. We will have a communication platform. And what I want to stress uh, that this project, as all our projects that is done through Global Office, they are not connected with politics, and uh, I, we won't use these projects in political campaigning, and we won't use this organization to promote some political interests. And um, we also differentiate our activities. My activity as deputy and the organization as a civil society organization. So this is our obligations, and uh, we hope that one day when this project, and I believe that this project will be successful, that this pro uh, project will be much more than local initiatives that are now, and uh, this will be the basis for the people to think about political career, to think about social career, and uh, not because we are campaigning now. So I want to welcome Svetlana Kaladi. She is our uh, friend and uh, uh, also uh, she's the coordinator of Go East initiative. So uh, Go East started 30 years ago. I was born in uh, Andrats at uh, Lugansk Oblast. Now this town is occupied. And uh, for, me, the occu uh, for me, the motivation is both professional and personal. And I believe that we should do everything um, through our heart, and in this way we will be, we will be efficient. And Go East, uh, as the initiative um, of Global Office, uh, this year we started the first big stage of our program that will be directed at the development and support of NGOs in the east of Ukraine. This is Donetsk and Lugansk regions. Starting summer this year, we started actively uh, working and we have uh, uh, communication, as Mustafa said, and uh, together with our team, we started traveling around the towns, uh, in towns, and uh, we started this, uh, this summer. And uh, speaking about the context uh, that is now in the east of Ukraine, uh, we uh, follow design thinking and we develop all, all our programs and instruments for our work based on real needs. That's why our first step was research and the results we are going to present to you today. So our team consists of three people. This is Marichka Varinikova. She is our regional coordinator in Severodonetsk. Yulia Fedotovsky, she is a project manager in Kiev and our communication team. Ratislava Bramets and uh, Tanya Kirilenka, and uh, this is our team. We started uh, our traveling in the east, and we um, visited 17 towns 
and we communicated with the uh, eighty uh, NGOs or initiative groups. So this is one hundred and twenty five people. So how did we select these organizations? This was the stage. From the start, these were open sources and sites of the organizations and their pages on Facebook. And then we visited the towns. And there is problem of communication uh, with these organizations. And we came to towns and we asked uh, residents what is efficient and uh, in this way, we reach such organizations and what we understood and what were our um, what were our thoughts were that were confirmed. So these regions, they need uh, they need trust to be established between uh, NGOs and um, um, residents of these uh, towns. So the programs are inefficient and uh, uh, we uh, I would like to say that in many cases programs that, uh, that are promoted by grant organizations or initiatives from other towns of Ukraine they are not systemic and uh, they come with one training or to make some small projects but this unsystemic work it influences trust and uh, for us go east is a big marathon where stage by stage we're going to build these uh, communications between organizations and we will help them to become partners among themselves and this is our main aim so uh what are these organizations and what they do so for the rest it was important to research and our community it deals with development these are not humanitarian support organizations these are organizations that move in the direction of creating their own strategy in most cases they are um, organizations that do not have one target audience they can work uh, with different, uh, they can work with different groups, and they work in the sphere of non-formal education. And uh, uh, they, uh, uh, this type of organization uh, is really needed in the small towns of the east of Ukraine because they are platforms for communication, and local residents they can not only listen some lectures or watch movies, but also to get alternative education and in this way they can understand what uh, speciality can be the next for them so for us it was really important to understand the needs of the organizations and uh, according to our research the main but not global problem and the need is financing of the organization but i would like to stress that this is not financing that was three years ago the organizations are now um, uh, shift from understanding that they need not only grants uh, for some projects, but also they look at social entrepreneurship. And uh, for them, uh, there is a need in each individual case to help them to develop a model, to help them develop a model that will be efficient in Bakhmut and Mariupol, because these towns are different, and in each in each organization, they need to have their own model, and in this we see um, our support. So big um, a part of work we may um, deal with is communication, communication of these on NGOs for their target audience, and uh, here they want to understand who are these audiences and how to um, include new representatives in the organization as uh, employees, managers, finance uh, officers, and how to um, also involve this target audience uh, and also communication among themselves and creation of partnerships. And uh, really interesting uh, is that 15% uh, of organizations they said about their readiness to create partner projects and uh, 
and uh, these organizations, uh, they want to develop a joint project. These are three towns, Kramatorsk, Slavyansk, and Konstantinovka. And these three towns, uh, they have organizations that uh, want to implement their own projects, and they addressed us in order that they, we help them to build this communication among them. So also one of directions of, of our work uh, is to understand what projects of NGOs, what they want to see uh, in their own towns. And these are four directions. We divided them. These are media projects. This is really important because uh, in some towns, uh, independent media is lacking. And here there is an issue that, for example, someone wants to do this but uh, do not know how to do it. But uh, also there is an issue that uh, uh, there is lack of journalists who want to organize the independent media outlet and also about line of contact uh, and uh, they lack information. There is no radio or newspapers. And also the pro educational projects. This English language school, business school, which is needed because we understand that the region is not just the conflict and post-conflict region, but it soon will be post-industrial, and uh, where the citizens of these uh, towns be working after mines are closed, we need to start thinking about that now. And so professional business school or English language professional school, which gives some additional skills, is very important. So we were grouping the projects along educational um, sector so that uh, people can take into account what are the needs, what's needed for each town, and this way we can reach synergy. Then the projects in the sphere of law, that's a law school. Very interesting was to look at the experience of uh, Mariupol. There's a, a request uh, to have the lawyer on uh, the affairs of minors and the organizations which would help civilians who were in uh, captured and uh, as go east uh, what what we'll be doing with what we have learned from the east uh, we have three directions for the nearest year for our target audience we'll be working with them individually when we understand what is the request of the organization from Bakhmut or Mariupol and we'll be providing them uh, mentor type uh, assistance and will be creating the community of uh, experts from different parts of Ukraine in different sectors who could become the advisors on certain issues. And uh, we have some positive feedback because the time which is used for consultations uh, is uh, smaller and the results that the organizations could achieve is much bigger. That's individual type of work. Then we are planning to organize four plus one forum local. And that's where we'll be uh, doing uh, some level up for the projects. So this forum will have several pal panels and uh, we will discuss different problems. Uh, first, mm -hmm. communication platform to create uh, pages on social media and also um, the building of strategic aspects of communication. So many needs will be covered concerning those requests that were made. And also on the slide you see our agenda. For today, we chose Kramatorsk, Lysychansk, Slavyansk, Mariupol, and Pakrovsk, and we will invite residents of our uh, of other cities to join. So we want to establish communication between different towns, and we want to provide to them a platform to share their ideas. And we believe that in the East, there are many different cool practices that can be implemented not only in the East, but also in other towns of Ukraine. For us, 
it is really important to work in this region first and to help them to strengthen them institutionally and uh, better understand what they do and then to spread this experience to other towns and cities of Ukraine. And also I would like to tell you briefly about our students exchange program. We have uh, consent with Mariupol and Uzhgarat universities and uh, we want to realize a pilot project this year uh, with the students of this uh, of these cities and our task is to help them to know other cities to develop their own projects in the sphere of uh, cinema of photography so this will be learning in other town and also a project that they will be uh, doing uh, in the team and they will be able to present this project in their own town and also I would like to say that we as go east we are really open and we want to become a platform to bring uh, together people from different areas and we want to develop an instrument and you will be able to join as mentor as a participant of the project as volunteer so now we help international organizations that want to develop a program in the sphere of culture for the eastern areas and we provide consultations and we help them to meet with organizations at the local level in order that they better understand what program they should prepare and we ask you to join our project and to follow the events on our site global office and on our uh, Facebook page uh, Global East and uh, then we will work together at the level of our competence and uh, we can be create a drive for the development of the whole Ukraine. Thank you. So now we can start Q&A session. Please, if you have questions, you're welcome. Women's League for Peace and Freedom. Do you plan to have some analytical studies about sustainable economic development over the region? Because I see that uh, in uh, uh, three or four years, activists who get some skills or get some education, they just leave because it is um, impossible to stay there because the economy of the region do not provide any alternatives. And the second question concerning financing from the state. Is there any opportunity of advocation campaign concerning financing of uh, organizations because many organizations they are hostages of uh, um, uh, of uh, financial support but uh, it doesn't meet the needs they have is it possible to do you see the opportunity to create transparent open system of financing of these organizations by the state. So I don't want to confuse you on state support. First, I want to say we have the Ministry of uh, Temporarily Occupied Territories, and you know that they work with donors, and uh, they are also in some sort of hostages of those donors because they do not have their proper financing they are stuffed only 45 percent themselves so as to financing and needs in the regions in order the states started to finance first they should develop a strategy what they are going to do locally and some people in the ministry of temporarily occupied people uh, occupied territories they have the vision but we do not uh, see the implementation of this and uh, 
This is about war, this is about reintegration, humanitarian law, and the line of confrontation. And uh, saying openly, I do not see a single strategy of reintegration of occupied territories and the ter separate territories that um, are controlled by uh, Ukrainian power. So there is another analogy I want to bring. So yes, people will flee from the region because there are many problems there, but people also go from Ukraine as well. So there should be some state support of such initiatives, but we don't have it. And uh, we won't have it and we didn't have it for the last 25 years, but we stayed here. We uh, tried to do something. There are many successful people who stayed and uh, they want to implement their vision here. So we can make efforts to help people to stay in these territories and to calm them down and ask them to uh, stay in these territories, but we won't do it. So um, people who will stay, they will continue to develop the region. So we should look forward 10 years and uh, there will be different situation. Who will rebuild this territory? People from Lviv, uh, Kiev, Dnipropetrovsk? No, they have their own life, their own projects, their family work and so on. And there should be people that are interested in the development of of uh, uh, this region and the long-term prospect, and we should create a view and we should help them to create big projects. No, this is not easy. If it would be without us, it would be without us, but we started this project and about uh, economic uh, capabilities also depends on the power, but now we are speaking about uh, civil society initiative and uh, about state efforts uh, and uh, uh, concerning me. So we developed the law on uh, temporarily occupied territories. We try to help the ministry and uh, that uh, um, we help to create uh, administrative services centers and uh, we should clearly define state activity and civil society activity. I'm sure that very often civil society organizations, activists are more sensitive and they understand more what the regions need than the, uh, they, they understand it more than the authorities. And if you look at what was has been happening in Ukraine during the 25 years, then let's look at who was more successful in meeting the needs of the civil society, but they were the, the civil society organization. There are many functions, there are many projects which are, uh, existing now. And one more thing I would like to tell about donors and funds. It's wrong to think that they know what the region needs. That's mutual work. If they see that in some specific region there's a need uh, to have the law education, uh, then they will create it. But that needs to be there. And then in many cases, I know, you know, the money is spent just uh, to put a tick. Uh, there are funds, they are to be uh, spent, and someone writes that we have done so many good projects. Who assesses them? I remember the project development of civil society in the Donetsk region. How could you measure that? But the money is spent, big money is spent, a lot of money is spent. and. Uh, it cannot be compared to what people are doing locally. They are doing something realistic. Donors, uh, they are not the weather. You can change them, you can influence them. And I believe one of the directions of our communication will be to get all the donors together and tell them, it's great that you are funding, but all the funds go into the air. Why? For, two, for 10 years we've been funding the civil society projects in Donetsk and Lugansk region, and now we cannot even find a single organization that can become the hub in this region. What have you been doing for 15 years? Who were you funding? Maybe it's not about money, maybe it's because you were not analyzing. We believe that the problem is there, so we'll be helping the donors to develop the normal agenda for their funding as well. Any other question? No, no more? Yes. 
back to the conferences and analysis of the situation, the business school is writing a case for the whole year. Do you have a mechanism, best practices, uh, which uh, survived in the East? Maybe you can describe these best practices and implement them in some other parts of Donetsk and Lugansk region. Are you planning to do that and what could be the first steps made? Thank you for the question. That is one of the uh, objectives of Go East is to uh, really uh, describe these uh, best practices. They do exist and uh, via fora, via individual work, we will be able to understand this experience will be able to form it as a formal case which in the future could be disseminated. But that's not about two months time. It's for half a year, for a year. These are our first plans when we are developing the network. We understand the experience existing. We are registering it and then we disseminate it in regions for Ukraine. But that's not about two, three months. It's in the plans, but it's half a year, a year, so that we have a very specific case. And then what assistance do you need? We do need assistance. There was this sl one slide about it. It's professional work from the point of view of the sphere that the person uh, is the specialist in. Once we're talking about some specific organization, you can become the mentor. If um, your professional development is in developing the strategy or registering some case, we can develop such uh, terms uh, due to which we will be able to do it together with you. Or maybe participation in our events in the East in fora, and that's where you can join and provide your expert support or develop together with organizations and work on their needs. And we will always be happy to see you in the East. We do need the competent support and individual work with organizations there. Any other questions? No. Then I would like to wish the project big success because these are the things we do need. Thank you.